Good evening. On the archive, my name is Chris Henderson. I'm the president of Lumos Energy, and I act as clean energy advisor to First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities from coast to coast to coast across this vast and magnificent land. And I'm also the author of a recent book called Aboriginal Power, which is why I'm here to speak to you today. On the walls of the archives of Ontario is this magnificent cartographic image. It's a map of David Thompson, explorer, extraordinaire, who worked for the Northwest Company and traversed around across Canada. This map is an image about the resources that we have in this country, renewable resources, wind, hydro, solar, biomass, and geothermal, that we can tap into and there is a demand for. And that demand will be satisfied only if First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities in this country share in the bounty of the renewable resources on their traditional territory. And they should. Of the 100 poorest communities in the country, 92 are Aboriginal. It is a sad Canadian story of a history that is not consistent with our Canadian values. It's a story that we have to change. We have to write a new history of Canada's relationship with its First Peoples, and I submit to you today that perhaps one of the most effective ways to do that is through clean energy development that helps protect our environment and regenerate our economy. It's April 22nd, 2010. I'm in the community of Inukjuak in northern Quebec. It's Earth Day. Inukjuak is on the shores of Hudson's Bay, the eastern shore near the Arctic Circle. It's an Inuit community of 2,000 people, pristine, lovely, and it's reliant on dirty diesel power for its heat and power. The Inukjuak River, which flows beside the community, is a source of hydropower. And this is an example of the clean energy resources that can feed Aboriginal communities, but ones also on the grid that can feed the consumption of energy we have in this building, in your homes, and in our industries today. I would submit to you that if we don't do that, we miss perhaps the greatest single opportunity to change the energy mix that you've seen already today to one that is more sustainable for the future. The Inukjuak River flows pristinely. We'll put a small reservoir on it without a dam, with a large dam. It will fuel and take away the diesel fuel that now litters the land and emits harmful greenhouse gas emissions. For anyone from Quebec, from the Hydro-Quebec of the government, if you want to know about a Inukjuak, talk to me after. So you might say, well, that's a new track. What about other communities? What's amazing is that we have gone to zero to 80 in the last decade in the Aboriginal clean energy across this country. In every province and territory, there are Aboriginal communities with own parts of clean energy projects on their traditional territory. Projects that not only supply cleaner power for us, but also are economic value generators for themselves. And they go on and on. You go to the Lower Metagamy in northern Ontario, Big Beaver Falls in the Kapuskasin area, Doki Wind in northern BC, La Romaine in, the, on, in north shore of Quebec, Frida Creek in, uh, near Powell River in BC, Umbata Falls near Thunder Bay, Oki Kendot on the French River in northern Ontario. There are questions about how these projects are developed in a clean, green, and sustainable way, and Aboriginal Park talks about that, how they're doing just that, because if Aboriginal people are co-owners in the livelihoods of sustainable resources, they will take the stewardship that their generations and elders have given them to make sure it's generated and used wisely and the environment, habitat, and fisheries protected. So you strike the balance between economic need for energy with cleaner power with the need to protect our environment. Aboriginal power is nothing else if a story, than a story about heroes, and I have many. Let me tell you about a few. Chief Judith Sayers is the former chief of the Hupacasset First Nation in Port Alberni, at the end of Barclay Sound, looking at the western verge of the Pacific Ocean, a beautiful area. They found a small Runner River hydro project called China Creek. They developed it 10 years ago. It's now fully paid for. It generates about a half a million dollars of revenue for their band every year. Revenue channeled into health and social services, into education, and into economic development, building a sustainable prosperity platform for that community. And there are 80 to 140 communities doing that across the country today. Over half are built, half yet to be built, and well on their way. It is a story of regenerating Canada and regenerating our energy future. This picture of the three headdresses of the Painan Project, Chicasta Patient, James Smith, and the Peter Chapman First Nation. In 171 years after they were pushed together by the government of Canada in one reserve, they have never, 
even though they've intermarried and played baseball together, they have never done anything economically together in almost two centuries until today, when they're developing a hydro project called the Paynan Project on the Saskatchewan River. So, so, so clean, clean energy is not just a forger of a regeneration between Canada and its first peoples, but among first peoples as well. This is the picture of the French River, a beautiful river on, in Northern Ontario connecting the Ottawa River watershed with the Great Lakes, part of what Etienne Brule and Samuel de Champlain connected to found Canada. It's also the home of the Ojibwe people, the Dokies people. Dams were built there 100 years ago by the government of Canada, and nothing was done ever, ever with them. Now the Dokies people started construction two months ago on a small 10 megawatt hydro project with a partner that they own 40% of. That 40% over the next 40 years will make that community $50 million. That will change their community and give Ontario green power. Such is the power of Aboriginal power. I love Chief Denise Rastoul dearly. She's holding the staff, the Eagle staff, over people, the Migasi, the Fish Eagle. And this defines a sustainable future that reflects on the past in a sustainable way into the future. My chief born plan is of the Souk First Nation on Vancouver Island wanted to go through a sustainable development process with his community. They studied it for two years before they did anything. But then they said, we can do this through solar power. So they put solar power on this building, and they put solar power on every building in the community. Fifty buildings across the community that are generated with solar power that is now changing the complete energy mix of the community, employing those gentlemen who happen to be on the cookhouse shack, which dries a salmon that is beautiful to eat. Sustainable economic development, sustainable community development, sustainable clean energy is the fundamental premise of Aboriginal clean energy and power. And that's what Aboriginal communities are doing. And you need to know that and you need to embrace that. Peter Kirby is in the Atlin from Atlin, the, 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 the Track River Clinket First Nation. They want to do a small hydro project to replace diesel power in their community up near the Yukon border. Peter tells a story about he started working part time, then full time, then in the evenings, then the weekends. Then he started dreaming about the project. Then he had nightmares, but the project's done. It's replaced all the diesel power in their community, and his headdress adorns the front of Aboriginal power. Finally, my friend Shona Morgan. She's a Cree. She now lives in the West, in Manitoba. Behind her is a picture of a teepee. Beside it is her grandfather. Shona comes from two heritages, two DNAs, Aboriginal and white. And she says she looks at the world with two DNAs, and that is the story of Aboriginal power, the forging the partnerships between Aboriginal peoples, development companies, utilities, governments, and finance companies that benefit our economy, create jobs for First Nations, create employment for First Nations, create the economic generation that truly is sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen, what this does, what Aboriginal power does, it creates a clean energy capital circle, fueling the changing the future of Aboriginal people in this country. Remember, I said, 80 to 140 projects now underway. That's one out of every five to one out of every six Aboriginal communities in this country. That's not a small amount. The total investment there is over 40 billion. The total megawatts generated will be between 11,000 and 14,000, about a third of Ontario's power. What this defines is this. When white explorers first came to this country, they were given these fabrics. It's the two-row wampum. The two-row wampum in Eastern Aboriginal traditions is a symbol of two canoes rowing beside each other together into the future. For the last 300 years, we have disrespected that tradition. We have an opportunity into the future to not only respect that tradition, but affirm it, regenerate it through clean, renewable energy. And what that will do, in the mind of this Anukshwak, it points the way forward. It is this innovation, this ingenuity that we need to carve a new clean energy future for Canada because the aurora borealis may inspire you, it certainly does me. And the beautiful lichens of the Arctic create the fragility of our, represent the fragility of our environment, but also the potential of regeneration. Aboriginal power does that. I'd be pleased to talk to you after. We have books available for purchase. And what I would say to you, it's about energy. It's not about 50 shades of gray. It's not about erotica. But we all know the best orgasms are in the mind. This will tempt your mind and your heart. Thank you.